Good afternoon. Uh, it's great to be back here at the meeting on the Mesa. During the course of my presentation, I'll be making some forward-looking statements. So Orchard today is a global, fully integrated biotech company that's truly dedicated to helping patients with rare diseases around the world. Using gene therapy, and our particular flavor of gene therapy is the ex vivo hematopoietic stem cell gene therapy platform. And from a personal point of view, I'm just so thrilled to be part of this new wave of medicine, having spent 20 of my 30 years in the industry helping patients with rare diseases by bringing to the world mostly chronic treatments that help slow disease progression and improve quality of life. And, and for the first time, I'm looking at the possibility of truly curative potential medicines, one-off administrations giving lifelong transformative benefit. And I want to illustrate that for you from our own portfolio. So these are the, the, the lead three programs that we're looking to file in the next two and a half years. So on the left, ADA skid or bubble baby disease. Untreated, these kids, so these babies, will die in their first year of life because they have no functioning lymphocytes. They cannot fight infection. And from our core registration data set, of 20 patients treated at UCLA, you see 100% survival to two years. In fact, we now have a data set going out to six and a half years, showing 100% survival. Now, moving to the right, Wiscott Aldrich syndrome is another immune deficiency. This is characterized by severe infections, but also bleeding episodes, because these patients have low platelet counts. And I'm just showing you the bleeding episode data. And you can see pre-gene therapy, especially in that dark red color, those are the severe bleeding episodes. And that's what typically can kill these patients. Post-gene therapy, you see no bleeding episodes that are severe and almost no moderate bleeding episodes. Now moving to the middle, this is a neurometabolic disease, MLD that is characterized by very, very fast motor function loss and also cognitive function loss. And I'm just showing you one of the key endpoints here, which is the gross motor function measure out of a score of 100. And there are sort of two populations of MLD, the infantile and juvenile. You can see on the left the infantile, which is particularly fast progressing. And you're comparing the gross motor function measure at 73.1% of those that have been treated with gene therapy versus the natural history of this disease at 7.6%. So these kids are almost vegetative a few years after diagnosis. Now I could just show you graphs for the rest of my presentation, but I really want to show you a video of a very brave family, uh, Brad and Amy, Price, who had a number of MLD kids and um, were very brave in including their younger sibling in our gene therapy trial eight years ago, having identified the older child with MLD too late. Through the summer of 2010, uh, we visited a couple of different doctors for Liviana because she was completely normal. She was two and a half at that point, but started falling down more and her balance seemed a little off. Just I was in the kitchen and I heard her crying. I turned around and asked her what was wrong and she told me that her legs didn't work. We took her to the ER that night and within about two hours of her having an MRI, they, three doctors came in, sat down and told us she has a type of leukodystrophy, it's complete white matter loss on the brain and there's nothing you can do about it. You'll just have to keep her comfortable and you're gonna lose her. It's still hard to know that we couldn't do anything for her. 
Giovanni was only 11 months old and they said we needed to get him tested also. We actually did have some doctors that said, don't bother testing, it'll change the way you approach life because there's nothing you can do about it if he does have it. And that was not an option for me because I still wasn't taking the nothing you can do about it approach. So we ended up getting confirmation that both Liviana and Giovanni had metachromatic liver dystrophy. We're lucky to have a doctor here who's very connected in the leukodystrophy dystrophy community. He had already contacted doctors that were at the very beginning stages of a gene therapy trial for MLD. Liviana wasn't eligible for treatment because she was symptomatic already, so she couldn't receive treatment. And he was only the second child treated with gene therapy for MLD in the world. So we didn't have uh, other families that we could Asking, you know, or go to a blog. I mean, it was going in with a tremendous amount of faith and trust and hope. They've never used the word cure. They've never told me what's going to happen because they don't know. I mean, this, it, it's, we don't know. I never thought that he'd be playing basketball. Never thought that he'd be riding a bike. You know, he's doing all these things that he shouldn't be doing. You know, all these things that Liviana wasn't able to do. In my heart, I feel like she's the one who started not only saving Giovanni and Cecilia, but so many other children. That he has no idea that he's a miracle. He has no idea. And the kids sitting next to him have no idea that he shouldn't be there. So sadly, Liviana passed away at five, which is typical for this condition. Giovanni is living a normal life today. And it's one thing being able to have normal motor function, but it is another thing to have normal cognitive function. And this is new data that was presented just last month at the SSIEM on 29 patients with uh, MLD. And basically this graph shows your chronic, chrono, chronological age and expected cognitive function for that age. And that sort of gray zone that you can see there is the normal cognitive function relative to age. <clears throat> and you can see that if you treat patients early enough, uh, they will follow normal cognitive uh, function curve as well, as compared to the natural history that you can see at the bottom there. So I think this is really a remarkable time for gene therapy. And to remind you that we're using hematopoietic stem cell gene therapy, so we're uh, isolating, collecting, and purifying those hematopoietic stem cells. We're inserting a working copy of the defective gene into those stem cells using the lentiviral vector. We're freezing those gene-modified stem cells and then shipping them back to the patient to be thawed after these patients have been conditioned and infused into those patients so that once those then engraft in the bone marrow, you can expect lifelong correction of the condition. And we're very excited about this platform because of the power of hematopoietic stem cells. They give rise to many different blood cell lineages. Uh, you can see their immune system cells, you can see the monocyte macrophage lineage, and you can see the blood cell lineage the erythrocytes and platelets. And that allows you to address different physiological systems. So when you look at our portfolio, we have a whole range of different indications associated with the immune system, with the CNS, and with red blood cells dis disorders. And I think a particular interest is that uh, CNS uh, series of disorders where you can use the body's own system using the macrophage monocyte lineage to engraft as microglia in the brain and to express protein. And I think we've seen that in practice in MLD. So here's the pipeline. It's a very advanced and deep pipeline. And we have the neurometabolic disorders franchise. We have the immune deficiencies franchise and the makings of a third hemoglobinopathies franchise. So our lead programs are for MLD, which we're looking to file in Europe in the first half of next year. We're also looking to initiate a rolling BLA in the first half of next year for our ADA SCID program. And in 2021, we're looking to file the Wiscott-Aldrich syndrome 
program in both US and Europe. Beyond that, we have proof of concept in XCGD, another immune deficiency, as well as transfusion-dependent beta thalassemia. Now, the MPS1 program is in the middle of a proof of concept study as we speak. And I'd like to share some data, again, that came out last month, uh, sort of interim data cut from the MPS1 study. Now, these patients have an IDUA deficiency. The lack of this enzyme causes substrate to accumulate in all, cis all organ systems. So you have bone function problems, you have uh, cardiac problems, you have CNS uh, issues. And so what we were hoping is that this approach could provide benefit to MPS1 patients. And to do that, we felt that we need to have supernormal levels of IDUA enzyme uh, expression. So the left panel shows you peripheral IDUA enzyme levels at 10 times normal in this patient with one year of follow-up. And in the middle, you can see a, a substantial reduction of this substrate, this dermatin and hep heparin sulfate, uh, also in the system. On the right-hand side, you're looking at the CSF, so you're looking at a marker of addressing the CNS component with three times higher levels of uh, enzyme in the CSF than normal and a reduction in those substrate levels uh, that you can see. So again, I actually want to show you what this means from a patient perspective. So here is the 23-month-old boy that was included in the study with typical features of MPS1, so the coarse facial features, you know, because of the bone deformity, the clawed hands, it's difficult to operate with those hands, the extended stomach due to an enlarged liver and spleen, and the kyphosis or bending of the, the back. And now I'm going to show you the pictures of this uh, child uh, one year later. So you can see that the facial features have changed. You can see the stomach has normalized. Uh, you can see that the hands have also extended and are now able to operate a keyboard. And you can see that this child is also able to stand up straight. So this is very encouraging. You know, it's only one patient. This is an eight-patient study. We have six enrolled so far, and this is the longest treated patient so far. But it's encouraging to see uh, some sort of clinical manifestations in this condition. So finally, I just wanted to say a few words about value, because I think one of the challenges for our industry is you know, for so long, it's been about chronic long-term therapies being reimbursed in our system. And we know we're bringing out these medicines that through one single intervention have the potential to cure and change a patient's life for the long term. So how do we think about value, especially as we're dealing with, you know, childhood disorders? Well, we think about the child that is suffering many symptoms in a foreshortened life and the potential to give that child a normal course of development and normal participation in society and productive involvement in society. We think of the family and the impact of having a very sick child for a family, 20, you know, 24 seven care with these kinds of conditions. One of the partners probably has to give up their job in order to enable this to happen. And you can free up these you know, parents uh, under these circumstances from looking after a very sick kid. It has an enormous emotional and financial burden. But also for schools and other elements in the community that have to adapt to try and help this family. And then finally, the healthcare system where you have many different interventions for a very sick child like this, whether it's many ER visits, specialist visits, surgical interventions, but ultimately not delivering the outcome we all hope for. And so we think we'll be able to not only enable physicians to treat patients properly, but also to save resources in the healthcare system. So we'll be looking at this picture holistically as we think about the value of the medicines that we're bringing to the world. So I just want to end by saying I think this is an incredibly exciting time for us all in this industry. And you know, I really hope that through our work, we're able to ensure that 
many Livianas in future are able to have a medicine that can really help transform them before it's too late. Thank you very much.